Welcome back to another edition of the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast. So we've got a long time without doing any market updates. And this week we are sitting down with realtor Josh Betcher as we touch on specifically Saskatoon and all the things you need to know about buying a home in 2023. Hope you enjoy. This is the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast, the show that highlights Saskatchewan real estate. Looking to buy your first house, your next investment property? Subscribe to never miss an episode. Here's your host, Ron Caroni. Hello and welcome back to the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast. I'm Ron Caroni, your Saskatchewan mortgage professional. And this week, uh, a really cool episode. We haven't done one of these in a while. We are focusing on a specific Saskatchewan community and kind of giving us a little real estate update. And to help us do that, we have Josh Betcher, uh, a famous Saskatoon realtor now. You have excellent social media, my friend, and it's a real pleasure to have you on today. Thanks for having me, Ron. I'm happy to be here. But before we get into the, the Saskatoon market, Josh, just give us a little bit of a background on yourself and the team that you have. So my name is Joshua Betcher. I own Moulin Betcher & Associates, which is a full service real estate office out of Coldwell Banker Signature in Saskatoon, but also servicing Prince Albert and area. Wonderful. So uh, I'm, we're, we're kind of sitting at the beginning of March here. We've had two months go by. And so what we really want to do is just extrapolate what we can on what's happening in the province's most major markets. So I'll, I'll kind of let you lead this one, Josh. What are we seeing uh, from Saskatoon and uh, specifically some from some different neighborhoods? And can you give us the highlights and lowlights of what you're seeing? Sure. Um, I, I would start on the broader spectrum and say pricing trends overall in February. They varied heavily across the province with prices increasing in Melfort, Prince Albert, Saskatoon and Yorkton. Um, in most regions, price adjustments are relatively small as we continue to return to a more balanced conditional market. Hmm. Saskatoon in particular, um, we've seen sales activity slow for almost 20 percent for the consecutive or for a second consecutive month. So all of 2023, we've seen sales declining in Saskatoon. Um, those further declines in new listings keep inventory levels at a staggering 36% below the 10-year averages for the month and the months of supply remaining under four months. So other than making realtors very sad, what else can we say about these numbers? What 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 are we picking apart from that, Josh? Is it that there's just not a lot of homes on the market? There's not enough building taking place. People are hesitant to list their homes. What can we what can we take from those numbers? Well, the reality is is that there is a silver lining to it. Although we're lacking product heavily, which makes people like me sad because that pie just got a whole lot smaller for those 650 realtors in Saskatoon. With that being said, that is going to naturally increase the housing prices. Um, there, right. There's no doubt about it. Saskatoon reported a benchmark price of $372,400 in February. That's up from $366,000 in January and nearly 3% higher than this time last year. And that really speaks to that, at least in Saskatoon, the increase in interest rates has not softened the market yet, even though this time last year, interest rates were drastically lower than what we're seeing this year. We have not seen uh, that, that decrease translating into lower house prices, at least in this part of the country. That's right, specifically. Um, specifically Saskatoon. and it, We're the main city center hub of the province, so we're not going to see those same fluctuations. I mean, there are other centers such as such as Moose Jaw has seen a gargantuan reduction in sales activity and price. Regina has seen an average house price decline that's fairly substantial. Um, Prince Albert has seen an increase in housing price, and they've seen a gargantuan increase in sales. So it's, it's kind of a mixed basket of what you're going to get here. But by and large, I think that we're poised to do very well over the course of the next seven to eight years. When we look at real estate markets, it's always interesting to see that we can take Saskatchewan real estate as a whole and we can extrapolate some some averages, but there are a lot of localized areas and real estate performs differently in Prince Albert as it does Moose Jaw, Saskatoon, Regina. Can we say similar things about local neighborhoods in Saskatoon? And are we seeing things that uh, are, are we seeing neighborhoods that are selling well, that are performing well and others that might be lagging behind, Josh? 
Well, I mean, there's good and bad pockets to every city, and and we are seeing some 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 strange stuff. I mean, personally, in my experience, I've I've listed properties in the last few months that I thought, wow, there's no way we're ever going to sell this. Sure enough, it moves overnight. Um, then I think we've got a sure thing. Uh, the gun's loaded and it's ready to be fired. And we've got a property we think that's going to go on the first down market. And here we are sitting with that same property 100 days later. So if you ask me, if you ask me, am I an expert on the market? I would tell you no, because I've gotten it wrong <laughs> on a couple different occasions. But um, by and large, the areas that you're going to see selling quite substantially is the Stone Bridges, the Rosewoods, the uh, the Brightons, the, the newer developed areas where there's not a lot left to do. You're going to see those sell like crazy. Um, we're actually seeing a large increase in people trying to purchase income properties as well as landlords trying to offload income properties. So it's it's become a bit of a different marketplace. And, and I think that interest has come from the fact that a lot of these landlords believe that the market's high enough that they can get their value out without doing too substantial work to their property and of the same token the cost of living has gotten so high in saskatchewan and across canada people are looking for that secondary income right and there might also be some other factors there if you're a landlord who is holding a property that had a variable rate mortgage you might have seen your cash flow absolutely dry up and now you're looking for a, a way to offload a property where the value of the home has not dropped. Just as you're saying, we've seen an increase in those overall prices. And so maybe they view it as a nice opportunity to move on from that home, cash out their equity and move on to the next one. And I, I think it's a great point as well that buyers who are trying to qualify in this era are needing a little bit extra. If you are looking for a $300,000 home, and we've seen rates go up a lot. Now it's been reduced. You're still looking probably for the same style of property. And maybe it now comes in the form of having that basement suite. Is that something that you're also kind of seeing with your buyers, Josh? Absolutely. The last three buyers I've had, um, they've all bought with basement suites. Hmm. Awesome. And so I, I wanted to quickly come back to it. You'd mentioned those newer areas in Saskatoon. And is there anything in specific that buyers are asking for when they're looking for the Rosewood, the Brighton and the Stonebridge? Is it just that people like to live in nice new houses? Or is there something specific to those areas that make them desirable to live in? I'm going to be as nice to buyers as I can when I say this. But the modern day buyer does not want to do a lot of work. Move in ready is the name of the game. And that's even if your buyer tells you that they don't mind doing a little bit of work. Most of the time, they're lying to you. Mm. They, they, everyone, and I can't blame them. Buying a nice new house is wonderful. There's nothing to do. There's no stress. There's no must. There's no fuss. But of the same token, I can't guarantee you your investment. You know, there, there's more money to be made in the city centers and on properties that need some rehabilitation. But frankly, not everyone wants to do it. Can we in extrapolate? Fact, they're scared away. They're scared away from it. People like moving ready. Can we extrapolate on that a little bit, Josh? Is there an area in Saskatoon that you think there are some potential opportunities? Is there a certain type of build that if someone said, I want to get the most bang for my buck, this is the property that they should be looking at and maybe certain areas that people should be looking on or they shouldn't sleep on per se? Absolutely. In my opinion, obviously, in my so I on my personal residence is in Grosvenor Park. It's a wonderful area with large sprawling homes and gargantuan lots, but they're big old houses that need a lot of work. Mine's no different. Um, what you'll find just a couple blocks over from Grosvenor Park is West College Park. Now, there's a high there's a high number of rentals in that area, which can sometimes give the neighborhood a bad reputation. I do not see it that way. I think College Park, West College Park in particular, is so close to the university and the lot sizes are wonderful. I, I think it's got a lot going for it. And as far as investment dollars are concerned, in my opinion, soon enough, that is going to be the place where investors are going to buy their income properties. No doubt in my mind. You're wonderful. that close to the university. Um, I see it over the next 10 years as a foolproof investment. Is there Are there any areas of the city that you would say are lacking behind? We've kind of st touched on the stronger areas, but is there an area of the city that either it's not being talked about enough and it's, a, it's another great area where someone could be investing or it's another area that has just seen sales drop? I would say, I would say as far as a strong area that people are sleeping on, 
Um, in Saskatoon as a realtor, you know, 85% of the clients you talk to tell you they want to live on the east side of the city. But there's a couple areas on the west that you absolutely are sleeping on. I have sold houses in Dundonald, which is next to Hampton Village and, and between 33rd. In that area, I find that ha it has more buyer sentiment than almost any other area I've been to. Hmm. The clients that I've sold to in that area do not want to leave that area. It is so community oriented and so familial. I think that that is one of the most underrated neighborhoods. For anyone looking at a map, if you're looking at a, a kind of a pie of Saskatoon, this is kind of the northwest corner of Saskatoon. You're kind of pocketed right near the airport. You're above 33rd Street there. And I've heard that from other people as well, that Dundonald, even though it is on the west side, is a nice neighborhood. And for anyone who's not familiar, Hampton Village is, I would say, very similar to a stone bridge in the yeah. sense that you have a lot of new builds there. Um, but you are on the west side of the city. And does that translate into price as well, Josh? Are you going to get a, a better deal? Absolutely. Your bang for your buck in Hampton Village is substantially better than Stonebridge. And I can tell you from personal experience, I lived in Hampton Village for three years, and I thought it was a wonderful neighborhood. Wonderful. Awesome. Uh, well, well, last word to you, Josh, um, touching on Saskatoon and the, the stats or any just personal opinions that you have about buying something in the city. Anything to touch on before we wrap it up here? Not in particular. I would just say that if you have the means to buy a house, do it now. Macroeconomically, um, over the course of the next eight years, I think you'll kick yourself if you don't. You see that on the long-term trend that real estate prices are going to continue to go up and that's based on strong job opportunities and our, our resource-based sector. Yeah, we're, we're a commodity-based and agricultural-based province. That provides a ton of job security, which in, turns, which in turn, we need people to fill the jobs. When you need people to fill the jobs, they need housing. That in conjunction with uh, you know, the federal government bringing in you know, 500,000 newcomers per year into Canada. Um, frankly, we can't keep up with, uh, you know, the pace we need to for, for, for house building. I, I don't remember the exact article, but I think it was, I think it was cited that we need to build about 5.8 million homes by 2030 in order to maintain this pace of immigration and population growth. People often forget that builders of these, of these properties or builders of these homes they also carry these same high interest rates and uh, that's going to cause them to probably slow down their thinking on their expansions and, and how many homes they're going to build per year. I think we're going to be lucky to build two and a half million homes the next seven years, let alone six million. So, you know, there's there's a lot of factors contributing to why I think it's a smart time to buy. Um, it's probably too many to list, honestly. I, I just think now is the wonderful time to get into the market. Don't miss it. It always seems a little bit on the nose when a realtor is telling you to buy, but I do think you bring up some some good points there and something that if you are a potential buyer, that there is something in there to to take heed of. And, you know, maybe you are still a few years away from buying, but it does make sense to keep your keep yourself up to date with what is happening. And if you do hear of a big job plant opening or a new resource sector opening up in Saskatoon, these are all things that help the real estate market and will ultimately push it higher. So I, I think you make some some great points there, Josh. Last question to you. What advice would you give to a younger version of yourself? Start investing in real estate now. You know, the, the best time was yesterday. The next best time is today. Absolutely. You know, going back when I was 17 and moving to the city for the first time and going to school, I, I think of that exact same thing. If I would have bought anything like a two bedroom condo where you could rent out the one bed to a friend or a classmate the ability to work on that cash flow and start real estate investing young is incredibly powerful yeah it's no different than a, a strong investment into an index fund you know it's the time that you're in the market builds exponentially Awesome. Josh, thank you so much for coming on today and uh, giving us your expertise on Saskatoon. I think there's some really great nuggets if someone was thinking about buying or investing in the city or if they own property here. So uh, really appreciate your, your time and going through that with us. Thanks a lot for having me, Ron.
Hey, thanks for checking out this episode of the Saskatchewan Real Estate Podcast. If you enjoyed it and found value here, do us a favor and hit the like button. If you're looking for future episodes just like this one, make sure to subscribe to never miss our weekly episodes that come out every single Monday. My name is Ron Caroni, your Saskatchewan mortgage professional. Until next week, bye for now.